Hello everyone, Rich here from Creating a Simple Life. This is not one of our typical videos, but when the water pump went on my wife's 2010 Jeep Liberty, I looked around on YouTube to see if there was any helpful videos on how to do it, and there wasn't much out there. So I thought I would try my hand at putting together a little video of how I changed the water pump on the Jeep. You know, part of being a homesteader and is being self-sufficient and sometimes you need to learn how to do certain little repairs like this one when you can't always get your car to shop. For me it's much more convenient. I can work on my own time. I don't have to worry about when I'm going to pick up the car, how I'm going to get the car there, how I'm going to get a ride back. Grab the tools out of the garage and go to work. This job probably took about half a day and cost $127 in parts. But if I had brought it to a shop, it probably would have cost ooh, well over $400, maybe $500 for this. So here's the video. Hopefully it helps you. And enjoy. So today we're going to change the water pump on this 2010 Jeep Liberty. Thought I might try and videotape it. I didn't see too many videos out there. Basically, it doesn't look too bad. We're going to have to take out this uh, water reservoir and windshield wiper reservoir so we can get better access to the pump. There's a couple of uh, little torque screws there. There's one there. I think there might be something. I don't know if we can see it. Down in there behind the horn. Well, the first thing I want to show you is how it sounds. I don't know if you can hear that, but if your Jeep sounds like this, it needs a water pump. What you're hearing is the squealing of the bearing on the water pump. There's your water pump right there. That sounds terrible. I don't know if you could see it moving because it's dark, but if you can wiggle that pulley, which it shouldn't move, you need a water pump. Alright, so the first thing we have to do is drain the coolant out of the bottom of the radiator. So the first thing we're going to do is try and drain that without getting coolant all over my camera. Okay. I was able to put a small hose on there to see so it could direct a, into a little basin and that valve wasn't that easy to open it was kind of tight it's not a lot of room to get in there and turn it so that drain we'll get back to it okay while that's still draining I'm gonna take off this little hose there I'm gonna take off that screw there I'm gonna take off that screw there and I'm gonna take off this uh, wire harness here, I think this is for the windshield washer sprayer. And I'm sure there's a fan control on the bottom that we'll have to get to. Alright, after messing around with that for way too long, I ended up taking the battery out of and uh, still the horn had to be slid out of the way on this side and then over here was a real bear to get to the bottom one on that side because of this air box which I couldn't figure out how it comes out is some kind of clip on the bottom but uh, yeah so we got that going now we're gonna take out this shroud it looks like there's two two bolts eight millimeter on top maybe two on the bottom all right okay so we have the fan and shroud assembly out of the car, it's all one unit. I have to unplug the harness to the fan motor. Now you can see we can get to the water pump. Uh, this is the wire right there for the harness for the fan. What I like to do is put a piece of cardboard up against the radiator so when I'm working around with tools I don't bang into it. Plus, it also protects my arms from getting cuts. And now would probably be a good time to tighten up that pet cock down there because it's a little pain to get to from the bottom. 
Okay, so to get the belt off, basically all you have to do is loosen up on the tensioner here with a 15 millimeter. And we're gonna put pressure on here. And then you can remove the belt. So that comes off. Come around there. So that's gotta go. So yeah, if your water pump looks like that, if you could see that wiggling like that, that's horrible. 87,000 miles in Jeep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I believe eight bolts. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is take off this idler pulley so we can get to that other bolt. That idler pulley right down here. Okay. Another thing I wanted to point out too is that you could see that it was actually starting to leak a bit. If you look at the oil filter, there's some splatter on there and there is splatter in a couple other areas behind the pump. One thing I wanted to point out was look at all the rust on this, uh, on so a lot of the components and parts. So that's the capping washer for the idler pulley. And if we look down in here, we have a lot of rust on everything. Down on the bottom, down on the frame. There's a spot over here that I don't like the looks of. That's a ground wire. Yeah. Okay, one thing you want to do is take note of all the bolts because they're going to be all different lengths. So I'm just going to start from the left here and go work my way around. I'll call that number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way around. There's one on the bottom that you can't see. So I'll just line them up on the bench like that and we'll put them back the same way. What is it? Five short ones and three long ones. Okay. And that's the order that came out. I'm gonna have to get the hammer out and give it a tap. Okay, after a quick tap with the hammer, she popped right off. The seal broke very cleanly. Uh, there's the engine. We're gonna clean that up. And you can see we lost a little bit of uh, engine coolant that was laying in the engine. And um, we're gonna clean it up, put the new gasket, put it back together. Okay, so there's the old pump. Here's the new pump. A couple of differences is in the Impella. This one is plastic. That one's made out of steel. One thing, here's the gasket. It's like a rubber O-ring sort of gasket. I did notice a small nick in that gasket. And I am going to hope that we'll be okay with it. Okay, so I couldn't live with that gasket, so I wouldn't have been able to sleep at night. Ran back to Pep Boys. They gave me this one. Looks a lot better. It's a different kind of neoprene rubber. So, happy about that. I think this will be good. She's all cleaned up down there. I don't know what you could see, but uh, that's the angle we got with this camera. Now let's go put it together. Okay, so I got all the bolts snugged in in their position. Now I'm going to torque them. Um, torque spec is 40 pounds, but we're going to go half that, probably 25 first in a crisscross fashion, and then we'll s finish up the torque at 40. You get the idea. Everything's all torqued. Okay, well I got the two idler pulleys uh, back on. I did replace those. Uh, I don't know if they really needed it. They were a little, a little noisy, but nothing serious. But I'm in here, it's another 36 bucks for the two. No big deal. So, torque those down. Spec calls to 24 foot-pounds. I don't know, I probably went a little heavier on those, because you know, I don't want it to loosen up. So anyway, um, we're going to put the belt on.
There was no diagram under the hood for this car as far as where the belt goes, how to route the belt, but it's easy to figure out because, you know, the belt goes in the grooves, the smooth part of the belt goes around the smooth pulley, so we'll figure it all out and we'll come back. Okay, that looks right. Uh, I, you know, I remembered how it was when I took it off, but I did double check the, everything is nice. I'm going to go ahead and put the fan back in, put it back together. Okay, so far it's going back together easier than it came apart. Uh, probably most of that was because of me finding my way. Uh, I never did something like this before on a Jeep, but I do have a mechanical background, so it wasn't too bad. Um, there's two, like I said, just put the two eight millimeter bolts on the top, and there wasn't two at the bottom. The just sort of hooks into a plastic tab, but I should mention down on this side, there is a bolt clamping the two transmission lines to the bottom of the fan assembly. I don't know if you can see it, but so you got to put that bolt back in. And of course, I did forget to tighten the pet cop before I put it together, so I just climbed under there and tightened it up. It wasn't too bad. All right, once again, everything went back together easier than it came apart. Uh, I got everything in. I got the screws in. I, my little windshield washer thing. I'm just going to put the battery back in, fill it up with coolant. I did get the fan motor connector down on the fan when we put that together so that's good just double checked everything and battery's going in we're going to fill it up with coolant and give it as good a run yeah these little torx things are a pain in the neck you got to be a little careful because if it's just plastic that this is going into a little uh sort of uh metal clasp that goes over the plastic the other ones go directly into the plastic so if you're over tightening any of that stuff you're going to break it So far, we're going to have to definitely get more coolant in here. We're going to let it run and get up to temperature with the thermostat wide open and the heat blowing. Make sure everything is circulating and opened up. Uh, quite a bit of troubleshooting trying to get the air out of the system. We finally got it all buttoned up. It's running good. We got the heat working. I had to put some coolant into this little bleeder screw there. I, I even when I did that, I, it still was vapor locked. So I uh, just let it run and heat up and then let the radiator cap off and then I put more coolant in and I put more coolant in over there. And after messing with it for quite some time, I finally got it to open up. So. So that's that. Let's go go for a little drive. Temperature gauge right in the middle. Looks good. All right, let's put the camera down. We'll go for a little drive. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I had fun making it. I don't think it was too bad of a job for my first attempt at something like this. I tried to move it along as best I could so it wouldn't be too long of a video. Please let me know if you want to see more. I do have a few other repairs coming up in the near future. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. See you on the next one.